Icon series. Hi children, good morning. So in the previous episodes, we have discussed a defined types of uh, plants that means uh, living things and uh, non-living things. So in today's episode, we are going to discuss the second chapter, plants life. So in this chapter, uh, the discussed topic is plants, pots and their functions. So now we are going to discuss what are the plants, pots and what are their functions. So children, we have uh, observe different types of plants in our surroundings. Uh, some plants are very big and some plants are small and some plants are very very small. So some plants are very big like mango tree, banyan tree, neem tree etc. So those plants uh, which are very big are called trees. So those plants which are looking very big are called trees and these trees have a lot of branches and a lot of leaves so etc. So for example a mango tree, a banyan tree and these are the examples for trees and some plants are very small and the small plants are called shrubs. So these are the small plants are called shrubs. Uh, for example, uh, rose plant and lily plant. So some flower plants are examples for shrubs. And we observe very very small plants in our surroundings. That very very small plants are called herbs. And examples for the herbs are uh, pea plant, money plant. So this money plant will be observed in various sources. Uh, so children, in this way we will observe different types of plants in our surroundings. So some plants are very big and they have a lot of branches and a lot of leaves. So those big plants are called trees. And these trees have the stem is very thick and woody and strong. So they have a very thick, very thick stem and it looks very woody. So that's why their stem is called trunk. So whereas some plants are very small, the small the small plants are called shrubs. Example rose and lily. And these plants have the stem is very thin, the stem is thin but strong. So some plants like uh, uh, very very small plants are called herbs and examples for the herbs are pea plant, money plant, okra plant, uh, these are examples for herbs and these plants have the stem is very soft and weak. So the stem is soft and weak. So in this way, we can observe different types of plants in our surroundings. So some plants are big and some plants are small and some plants are very very small. And some plants have the stem very thick and woody that is a very thick stem and strong stem is called trunk. And some plants have the stem is very thin but strong. And some plants have the stem is very soft and weak. So these are the different types of plants we will observe in our surroundings. So let us learn what are the parts of the plant. So what are the main parts of the plant and what are the different parts in your plant and what are their functions. We will learn about their functions. So let us see about the parts of your plant. What are the different parts of a plant? So children, look at the picture. Uh, you are observing a plant in, in it and you are also observing different parts in it. So the part of the plant which grows below the soil and holds the plant firmly in the soil is called roots. So roots. So these roots will grow under the soil and these roots will hold the plant firmly in the soil and the remaining part of the plant 
which grows above the soil that means which grows above the uh, soil is called shoot so this shoot contains so this shoot contains stem and branches leaves birds flowers and fruits so children so these are the different parts in a plant so the part of the plant which grows under the soil that means which grows below the soil is called roots this roots helps the plant and this roots help the plant and they give support for the plant and holds the plant firmly in the soil without fault and uh, the part of the plant which grows above the ground is called shoot and this shoot has the main parts like stem branches leaves birds flowers fruits and thorns so these are the various parts present in a plant now let us discuss about each one in detail that is let us discuss about roots and what are the functions of the roots and also discuss the what is the stem and what are the functions of the stem and discuss the leaves and functions of the leaves and flowers fruits and seeds in this way now we are going to discuss uh, about each part of the plant and also its functions in detail so the first part of the plant the root so what is root so here there are two types of roots so already we have discussed about roots so this roots will grow below the soil and give support for the plant and holds the plant firmly that means hardly in the soil without failure so generally there are two types of roots there are two types of roots the first one is tap root the first type of root is tap root and the second type of root is fibrous root so children these are the two types of roots the first one is tap root and the second one is fibrous root so let us discuss in detail about each type of root so let us discuss tap root what is the tap root and how it looks like so generally tap root means so children look at the picture so in tap root there will be a, a main root so in tap root there will be a main root and some thin roots will be grown from the main root so in this way so some thin roots will be grown from the main root like branches so this type of roots are called tap root so children look at the picture in the picture you are observing the tap root so if you observe the tap root carefully there will be a main root in the middle so that is called main root and some thin roots will grow from the main roots so this type of roots are called tap roots and most of the plants so most of the plants like mango trees banyan trees neem trees hibiscus mustard so most of the plant we are observing in our daily life will have tap root system so this is about a uh, tap root and uh, some examples for the plants having tap root uh, so hibiscus and another one is a uh, mustard and also mango tree neem tree and rose plant so most of the plants that means most of the uh, fruits trees 
that means fruits, plants, and some vegetable plants. So all contains a tap root. So in tap root, there will be main root. So there will be main root in the middle, and some thin roots will be grown from the main root, uh, just to look like the branches above the tree. So this type of roots are called tap roots. So children, next we will discuss the second type of root that is fibrous root. The second type of root is fibrous root. Fibrous root. So children, in fibrous roots there will be no main root. So like in tap root, there will be no main root in fibrous root. So here, so, or, so many number of tiny roots will be attached to the end of the stem. So this is a soil and here is the stem of the plant and so many. So that means a large number of tiny roots will be attached to the end of the stem. So that means uh, it looks like a bunch of small tiny roots and this bunch of tiny small roots will be attached to the middle of the stem. So this type of roots are called fibrous root and there will be no main root like in the tap root. So, so many small roots, that means so many thin roots will be attached to the middle of the stem, that means at the bottom of the stem in the ground. So, this looks like a, a bunch of roots. So, this type of roots are called fibrous roots and the plants having fibrous roots are most of the grass related plants contains fibrous roots. So, that means grass plants. And grass related plants, uh, plants means uh, rice plant, rice plants, wheat plants, maize plants. So all these grass related plants will have these fibrous roots. So we can easily tell whether the plant have fibrous roots or tap roots by just observing its leaf. So here the leaves of these plants will be looks like this long and narrow and the veins will be like this and there will be no midrib and side veins. So if any plant has the leaves just like this that plant will have fibrous root. And if any plant have the plant leaves like this, that means it has a midrib. That means this midrib represents a main root and this side veins represents small roots that grows from the main root. So those plants which have this type of leaves will have tap root. And those plants which have the leaves like this will have fibrous root. So we can easily explain whether the plant have fibrous roots or tap roots by just observing its leaves. If any plant have leaves like this that means midrib and side veins then that plant will definitely have tap roots. If any plant have leaves like this, it like uh, the narrow long leaves and there will be no main, uh, there will be no midrib and it contains all side veins along its leaf, then this type of plants will have fibrous roots. So here the leaves resembles its roots. So the structure of the leaf resembles the roots here so that's why there are the two types these are the two types of fruits so one is a tap root and another one is fibrous roots and the examples for the tap root are hibiscus mango tree banyan tree and examples for the fibrous roots are grass related plants like rice wheat maize so these are about the types of fruits functions of the root up to now we have discussed different types of roots now we are going to learn about what are the functions of the roots so the first function is so these roots 
will hold the tree firmly in the soil. So hold the plant, hold the tree or the hold the plant firmly in the soil. So that means uh, these roots will give support for the plant without fell down. So the first function of the root is the roots will hold the plant firmly in the soil. And second one is the roots will absorb the water. So the roots will absorb the water and supply this water to all parts of the plant. That means supplies the water to the leaves, fruits and flowers through stem. So this is the second function of the root. So the second function is the roots will absorb the water from the soil and supplies the water through all parts of the plant through the stem. And next one is, the third one is some roots stores food. So some roots in some plants stores food and examples for this type of roots are uh, like a carrot and a radish. So carrot and radish are the roots which stores food. So that's why the carrot and radish you have, uh, the roots of the carrot and radish are very thick because they store food and the carrot and radish are the root parts of the plant we are eating. So the carrot and radish etc are the root parts of the plant and we are uh, using them as vegetables and we are eating them as vegetables and they are not the fruit part and those are the root parts of the plant and they are looking very thick because they store food. So some roots store food like uh, carrot and radish. So carrot and radish are the roots so which stores food in them. That's why they are looking very thick and they can be used as a food and they can be cooked and we can use them as a food. So children, so these the three are the functions of the roots. So let us see once again, the first function is the roots holds the plant firmly in the soil. And the second one is the roots absorbs the water from the soil and supplies to all parts of the plant through the stem. And third one is uh, stem roots, that means some roots store food in them. Examples for type of uh, uh, roots are carrot and radish. So carrot and radish are the roots uh, with food stored in them. So these are the functions of the root. The second important part of the plant is the stem. So what is a stem? So this stem is very important for the plant. Because it gives support for the plant. So it gives support for the plant and it holds the plant upright and prevents it bend, prevents the plant from bending or from fell down. So the stem is the important part of the plant. It gives support for the plant and holds the plant upright. And this stem is the part of the plant which grows above the soil. So roots are the plant which grows below the soil and the stem is the part of the plant which grows above the soil. Next, here we will see different types of stems for different types of plants. For example, so some plants are very big and very large. So some plants are very big and very large and they have a lot of trees and a lot of branches and their stem is very thick and strong and woody. So some plants have the stem very thick, strong and woody. So that's why the, that type of stem is called trunk. So some plants have very thick, strong and woody stem and that type of stem is called trunk. So for example, the stem of bunion tree and mango tree, neem tree etc. have a thick, strong and woody stem. That's why their stem is called trunk. And those trees are looking very big and large and they have a lot of branches and a lot of leaves. 
so whereas some plants are very small and their stem is thin but strong so some plants like shrubs so like shrubs so shrubs are the plants which are very small looking small in size and they have less number of branches and less number of leaves so in shrubs the stem is thin but strong so thin but strong so whereas some plants looking very very small and their stem is very soft and weak those are called herbs so herbs are the plants which have very soft and weak stem and these plants are looking very very small and very lot a very less number of branches and less number of leaves so weak and soft stem so herbs have very soft and weak stem so for example the examples for the herbs are pea plant money plant okra plant so all type of vegetable plants are belongs to herbs so these are the different types of plants and different types of trunks they have that means the different types of stems they have so some plants are looking very big and large those are called trees and the stem of the trees is very thick strong and woody that's why the stem of the trees is called trunk so some plants looking small those are called shrubs their stem is thin but strong and woody so example for the shrubs are rose plant hibiscus plant so these are the examples for the shrubs and they have a thick but strong stem and some plants are looking very very small those are called herbs the stem of the herbs is weak and very soft and they cannot stand up and they will grow up with the help of your support so children so these are about different types of plants and different types of stems we have now we will learn about the functions of this stem children now we are going to learn about functions of stem so what are the functions of this stem so here the stem holds the plant upright so holds the plant upright that means this stem gives support for the plant and it prevents the plant from bending or from fell down so and it holds the plant upright and the second function is it supplies the water absorbed by the roots for the remaining all parts of the plant so it will supplies the water to all parts of the plant so supplies water to all parts of the plant so here the stem acts as a tube and this tube will supplies the water to all parts of the plant so generally roots absorbs water from the soil and the absorbed water will comes to the stem and this stem will supplies the water to remaining parts of the plant that is to branches to the leaves to the flowers and to the fruits and next it will also supplies food to all parts of the plant so supplies water and also supplies food to all parts of the plant so here so in the plant generally leaves prepares food by the process of photosynthesis so with the help of sunlight and water and carbon dioxide present in the atmosphere so leaves prepare food by using chlorophyll and the process is called photosynthesis the prepared food by the leaves will be supplied to all the parts of the plant with the help of this stem so here the stem acts as a carrier so it will carries the water to all the parts and it will carries the food to all the parts of the plant 
so that's why stem is the one of the most important part for the plant because it will supplies water uh, and it will supplies food so if there is no water then photosynthesis will does not takes place in leaves and it will also supplies the food prepared by the leaves to remaining all parts of the plant and another one is some stems for stores food in them so just like roots so in some plants stems also stores food so for example ginger potato so these are the stems of the plants which stores food in them so that's why the stem of these plants will become uh, very thin and bulbous so ginger and potato are the examples for this stem which stores food in them and we can eat the stem of these plants as a food uh, a ginger and potato and also another example is sugar cane so sugar cane is also the stem of the plant which stores food and water in them so sugar cane ginger potato etc are the examples for the plants which stores food in their stem and we can eat their stem as a food so these are the functions of the stem so let us see once again the first function is holds the plant upright and second one supplies water to all parts of the plant and third one supplies food to all parts of the plant and fourth one some stems stores food in them example ginger potato sugar cane so they are the stems of the plants they will stores food in them that's why they become thick and bulbous they can eat them in our food so children these are the functions of the stem so the third important part of the plant is the leaf so we will observe different types of plants in our surroundings so all the plants have same type of leaves no so different plants have different types of leaves all the plants does not have same types of leaves so different plants have different types of leaves and the leaves are looking different in their size and in their shape and color and texture etc so different leaves have different sizes and different shapes and different colors so for example some leaves are big and some leaves are small and some leaves are broad and some leaves are narrow and some leaves are long and some leaves are short so if you consider a banana leaf so the banana leaf is a long and broad leaf that's why the ancient people and some old people will use the banana leaf as a disposable plate for the food in this way we will use some uh, leaves as uh, disposable plates for the food because they are looking very broad and they are very long example banana leaf so in this way the leaves of different plants are different in their sizes shapes and color some plants looking big and some leaves look looking big and some leaves are small some leaves are broad and some leaves are narrow and some leaves are long and some leaves are short and some leaves are very thin like blade like structures and some plants have leaves in the shape of thorns like cactus plants so in cactus plants it does not have leaves the leaves are reduced to thorns and whereas the plants which grow in the hilly areas the leaves are very thin and looking blade like structures so in this way the leaves are different in their sizes shapes and colors and also some leaves looking the color of the some leaves are in red color and some leaves are in yellow color and some leaves are in white color etc so most of the leaves present in green color but some of the leaves of some plants like crotons the leaves are present in red yellow white color etc so this is about uh, different uh, shapes and different sizes of the plant leaves 
Now, let us see what are the different parts present in a leaf. So, look at the picture. Uh, in the picture, you are observing a leaf and its parts. So, if you observe the, so if you observe the a leaf picture, so you will observe all the leaves will attach to the branches and the part where a leaf attached to the branch is called petiole or stalk. And next, a thick tube will passes through the middle of the leaf and thick tube which passes through the middle of the leaf is called main vein. Main vein or mid rib. So, main vein or mid rib. And some thin tubes will grow from this mid rib. So, this small veins which grow from the mid rib are called side veins or veins. So, these are called side veins. And next, this tip is called the, the end of the leaf is called leaf tip. So, this is called leaf tip. So, children, so these are the some important parts of the leaf and also this flat green this flat green area of the leaf is called leaf blade or leaf lamina. So, this is called leaf blade or leaf lamina. So, these are the some important parts of the plant. So, let us see once again. So, the parts of the plant are, so generally the leaves attached to the branches. The part where the leaf attached to the branch is called petiole or stalk. And you will observe a thick tube will passes through the middle of the leaf. This thick tube is called main vein or mid rib. And this mid rib will divide the leaf into two equal parts. Next, some small veins will grow from the mid rib on the either side. This is small veins on either side of the mid rib are called side veins. So these are called side veins. And the end point, the end point of the leaf is called leaf tip. So, this is called leaf tip. So, these are the some important parts of the leaf. Children, so leaves contains a tiny pores. So, the leaves contains a tiny pores. So, these tiny pores are called stomata. So, this tiny pores are called stomata. So, leaves will respirate, that means leaves will breathe in and breathe out through these stomata. So, like our human beings, we will have sweat glands present on our skin. So, in the same way, the leaves will also contain a tiny pores on its surface. So, these tiny pores are called stomata and leaves will respirate or, and leaves will breathe in and breathe out with the help of these stomata. That means the leaves will uh, breathe in carbon dioxide and breathe out oxygen and also uh, leaves will respirate. That means uh, leaves will give out water vapor into the atmosphere with the help of stomata. That means uh, the exchange of gases will take place with the help of stomata. So the breathing of uh, carbon dioxide and breathe out of oxygen will take place with the help of these stomata. So the stomata are very helpful in the exchange of gases oxygen and carbon dioxide in the leaf. So the carbon dioxide by using carbon dioxide the leaves will prepare food with the help of chlorophyll present in it and that process is called photosynthesis. So leaves are very important part in the plant because because they are the food makers. So they are the food makers. So that's why leaves are called uh, kitchens. So kitchens are the food factories of the plant. So leaves are called so food factory. So because they will prepare food, that's why they will called as food factories or kitchen of the plant. So, why? Because they will prepare the food required for the plant in the process using photosynthesis.
So the green pigment present in the leaves is called chlorophyll. So by using this chlorophyll, so they will prepare food in the presence of sunlight. They will mix it up the water and carbon dioxide and prepare food materials. This process is called photosynthesis. So that's why leaf is very very important part in the plant. That's why they will called food factories or kitchen. So let us learn about what are the functions of a leaf. So the main function of the leaf already we have discussed earlier in this chapter. So the leaf will prepare food required for the plant. So the first function of the plant is they will prepare food. So they will prepare food required for the plant by using the process photosynthesis. So by using the process photosynthesis, so leaves will prepare their food. So because uh, how they prepare food, so the water absorbed by the roots and the carbon dioxide breathed in by the leaves. Here the water and carbon dioxide uh, will be mixed in the presence of sunlight and chlorophyll. They will prepare food that means they will prepare uh, glucose required for the plant in the form of fruits and vegetables. So this process is called photosynthesis. So the main function of the leaf is prepare food. They will prepare food. And the second one is exchange of gases will take place through these leaves. So exchange of gases. So during photosynthesis, the leaves will give off oxygen into the atmosphere. So this oxygen will enter into the atmosphere through the stomata present, present in the leaves. So in this way, the leaves have stomata. So through this stomata, the carbon dioxide will enter into the plant and the oxygen will uh, uh, go out to the atmosphere. So in this way, the oxygen will go out to the atmosphere, carbon dioxide enter into the plant. In this way, the exchange of gases will take place through the stomata of the leaves. Next, the third function of the leaf is uh, some leaves will store food in them. That means extra food will be stored in leaves in some plants. So stores the food. So some leaves stores food. Example for the plants which store food in their leaves are uh, like spinach, spinach, lettuce, so etc. So these are the examples for the plants which stores the fair food in their leaves. So children, these are the main functions of the leaf. The first one is they will prepare the food for the plant uh, by using the process photosynthesis. And the second function of the uh, leaves is exchange of gases. That means uh, leaves requires carbon dioxide and uh, they will give some oxygen during the photosynthesis process. So they will breathe in carbon dioxide and breathe out oxygen. So this exchange of gases will take place through the leaves. That means through the stomata present in the leaves. Next, the third function of the leaf is stores food. So some plants stores food in their leaves. Example, spinach, lettuce, and coriander, cabbage, so etc. These are the examples for the plants which stores food in their leaves. So children, so this is about functions of the leaf. The children, the next part in the plant is the flower. So we will observe different types of flowers in our daily life. And some plant, some flowers are big and some flowers are small. And there are different colors of flowers are also there. But some plants produce flowers and some plants does not produce flowers. So if you observe different flowers, they are different in their size and they are different in their color and they are also different in their shape. So daily we will observe different types of flowers which are different in their size, the shape and color. For example, rose, so lily, and jasmine, so sunflower, so etc. All these are the examples for the flowers. 
So these are the some examples for the flowers whereas the rose is in red color and lily jasmine are in white color and whereas the sunflower is in yellow color. So in this way so flowers are different in their size also and in their shape also and in their color also. So if you consider rose flower it is in red color and whereas lily and jasmine are in white color. So Whereas the rose is in smaller size when compared with the sunflower and lily and jasmine are very small when compared with the rose flower. So in this way the flowers are different in their size and in their shape and in their color. And flower is the most brightest part among all parts of the plant. So it is the brightest part and it is the attractive part for the insects and we are also attracted by the flowers of these plants. Flowers grow for the plant especially at the stalk, at the tip of the stalk. So these flowers grow especially at the part where uh, the leaves are attached to the branch. That means at the tip of the stalk. And uh, these flowers are very very important for the plants uh, for, and uh, they attract the insects by their colors and most of the flowers has a pleasant smell and they are looking beautiful to our eyes. So especially why these flowers has different colors and why these flowers has different types of smells because they have to attract the insects. So why these flowers has to attract the insects? because the reproduction will take place in these flowers. So flowers are the, the main site where the reproduction takes place. So that's why for the reproduction, that means for the uh, production of the seeds and fruits, so these flowers has to attract the insects. So that's why the reproduction will take place by the process called pollination. So this pollination process will take place in the part of flower and then the reproduction will take place in the flowers. So especially if we consider any flower or every flower, so there will be some green colored parts at the bottom of every flower and that green colored leaves present at the bottom of the flower are called sepals. So these sepals will protect the flower when it is in bud, in the form of bud. So when flower is in the form of a bud, these sepals will cover the bud and protect the bud from the insects and from the winds. And after the bud is grown into a flower, then the flower has petals. So sepals, so petals are inside the sepals. So these petals are in different color for different flowers. So children, so this is about flowers, especially the reproduction will take place in the pot flower and the pollination will take place in the pot flower. So that's why the flowers are in different colors and they have and different types of smells and pleasant smells, but they have to attract the insects. So insects are attracted especially by these colors of the flowers and by the smells. So pollination will take place when the insects fall on the flowers. Then if the pollination will take place, then reproduction will take place. And if you consider a flower, initially it will in the form of a bud and this bud will grow at the tip of the stalk. And after some days, this bud will grow into flower. So when it is in the form of a bud, then the sepals will protect the bud. And after the bud grown into a flower, so then the sepals will be there in the flower. So this is the structure of the flower and this is about the flowers. Now what are the functions of the flower? So what are the main functions of the flower? So children, so there are uh, nearly two functions for a flower. The first one is, uh, as we have discussed earlier, the production. So it is a site of reproduction. So mainly reproduction takes place with the help of flowers. And uh, the second function is, uh, so the pollination will take place in the flowers. 
So pollination will take place with the help of insects in these flowers. So these are the two functions of the flowers. The one, the first one is the it is a site of reproduction where reproduction takes place in the plant, and it will it will attract the insect. So flowers attract the insects by their colors and by their smells. And when insects fall on them, then pollination will take place. So due to pollination, so then fertilization takes place. So due to fertilization, then the reproduction will be takes place here. So this is about flower. The another part in the plant is fruits. So we will observe different types of fruits like banana, grapes, apples and goa, watermelon. All these are the different types of fruits daily we eat in, in uh, different seasons. And also we will uh, eat different types of vegetables in our food. So those vegetables and these fruits are the fruits from the plants. So that's why the plants especially gives food to the living beings. So the food given by the fruits, the food given by the plants will be mainly in the two forms. One is fruits and one is vegetables. So here, how the fruit will get from a plant? So how the fruit will be get from the plant? So first, the flower will be developed into fruit. So the flower will be developed into fruit. So because of pollination. So the flowers, insect, the flower attracts the insects by their colors and by their pleasant smells. When the insects fall on the flower, then pollination will take place. So when pollination takes place, then the fertilization will take place. So in the flower, there will be takes place pollination by the insects. So pollination will take place by insects. So due to pollination, then fertilization will take place. So after fertilization, the flower will develop into a fruit. So that means the sepals present at the bottom of the flower will fall down and the bottom part of the flower will become swollen and gradually it becomes a fruit. And after some days, the size of the fruit will become larger in size and becomes ripen. So when the fruits ripen, their color will also change. So children, so this is the development of a fruit from the plant. So fruits will be come from the flowers due to the process of pollination and fertilization. So flowers attract insects by their different colors and by their pleasant smells. When the insects fall on the flowers, the pollination will take place. So after pollination, then fertilization takes place. So due to fertilization, then a flower will be converted into a fruit. So how a fruit will be come, come from the fruit flower? So here the bottom part of the flower will become swollen. So the sepals present at the bottom of the flower will fall down and the bottom part of the flower will become swollen and become into a fruit. So after some days the size of the fruit become larger in size and their color will also change. So this is the way how a fruit will be produced from the flower. So initially, so as we have discussed earlier, so initially we get birds from the plants and these birds will turn into flowers. And after pollination by the insects, these flowers will be converted into fruits. So generally fruits means, so plants give two types of fruits. That is, so one are fruits that is apple, grapes, guava, and these are the different types of seasonal fruits. And another fruits given by the plants are vegetables. So vegetables are also the fruits given by the plants. So vegetables means, so most of the, all the vegetables, that means uh, we have cucumber, a bottle gourd and a bitter gourd. So all these are the vegetables, potato, carrot, all these are the fruits given by the uh, plants. So children, so this is about fruits. So the leaves prepare their food in the form of the fruits. So this is about fruits.
So these fruits are nothing but the foods prepared by the plant and food will be prepared by the leaves. So in this way the fruits will come out due to the work done by the leaves. So they will prepare food by using the process photosynthesis and due to the photosynthesis they will prepare food. Their food will nothing but fruits and fruits will uh, vegetables and also some seasonal fruits. So children, so this is about fruits. And what are the functions of the fruits? So what are the functions of the fruits? So there are some functions of the fruits. So the first one is, so fruits contains seeds. So every fruit contains seeds and the new plant will be grown from these seeds. So these seeds are very helpful in the reproduction of the new plants from the given plant. So the first one is fruits contains seeds and second one is these seeds will grow up into a new plant. So that's why fruits are very very helpful in the reproduction of the plants. That means the plants will reproduce new plants with the help of seeds and the seeds will be come from fruits. So children this is about fruits. The another part of the plant is seeds. So how can we get seeds? So as earlier we have discussed the seeds will come from fruits. So the seeds will come from fruits. So most of the fruits contains seeds and some fruits contain only one seed. And some fruits contain so, so many seeds. For example, if we take mango, so if we take mango, the mango fruit contains only one seed. So whereas if we take pomegranate and watermelon, so if we take pomegranate and watermelon, they have contains so many seeds, that means large number of seeds. So in this way, the seeds will come from fruits and some fruits contain only one seeds and some fruits contain so many seeds example mango fruit contains only one seed and pomegranate watermelon contains so many seeds so here the seeds will grow into a new plant so these seeds will grow into a new plant so that is called seed germination so the seeds will grow into a new plant. So this process of getting a new plant from the seeds is called seed germination. So generally the seed is a non-living thing and if the seed will fell down on the ground and if air, water, air, water and warmth so if the seed is supplied air, water and warmth, then it will becomes, it will get life and a new baby plant will be come out from the seed and it will grow up into a, a big plant. So this process of getting a new plant from the seed is called seed germination. So generally a seed contains a baby plant inside it. So that baby plant present inside the seed is called embryo and this embryo has no life initially and if we supply water and air to the seed then the new plant that means an embryo gets life and it will grow into a new plant. So the seeds are very hard to broken because the outer layer of the seed is covered with a, a thick layer. So the outer portion of the seed is covered with a thick layer and that's why the seeds are generally hard and they cannot be easily broken. So inside the seed there is a small plant, baby plant called embryo and it does not have any life and if we plant the seed into a soil then and if we give water and air then the baby plant gets life and it grows into a new plant. So this total process of uh, growing a seed into a new plant is called seed germination. Is called seed germination. 
So seed germination means the process of growing a seed into a new plant is called seed germination. So children, so this is the workflow. So this, this is the flow of how a new plant will get from the seed. So generally, so children, if you take seed, so the seed will grow into a plant and this plant will give flowers and these flowers will converted that means these flowers will turned into fruits and again these fruits will give us seeds so this is the way how a seed will convert into a plant and the plant gives flowers and flowers converted to fruits again we get seeds from the fruits in this way the plants will reproduce their new plants so that's why they are able to survive on the earth and their race will does not become exist. So this is the uh, process, this is the information about seeds. Next, what are the functions of the seeds? So children, the functions of the seeds is generally the seeds produce new plants. So the seeds produce new plants. That means the seeds grown into a new plants so the seed germination will take place with the help of seeds so this is generally the main function of the seeds so we can get new plants from the seeds of the plants